Three, two, one. This is Radio Days Africa 2021. Audio amplified. Download the Radio Days Africa app. Search Radio Days Africa in your app store. Recording in progress. Hello, and welcome to this session of the ongoing Radio Days Africa, the digital edition. I'm Jonathan James Liamgan, and I... From Cape to Cairo, you can bet that there is a community of persons who are carrying on their daily lives with dependency on the medium called radio. On the continent, if you intend to be kept abreast and up to the minute with developments, then there's no doubt that radio has remained the most widely consulted medium for such a feat. This also includes the millions who depend on radio for nonstop entertainment via music, dramas, and all sorts of things you can imagine. Radio continues to remain a key communication platform across the continent, and Vitz Journalism is launching a mapping study on community radio in Africa to get a better understanding of the radio landscape. So in this session, we will be hearing details about this mapping study that is being planned. Also, what are radio's current challenges and opportunities in different African territories? And how is it adapting to remain relevant in this uh, age and time? Joining me in this session uh, are Eshetu Bile Wele, who is from Ahadu Radio in Ethiopia, is the CEO of Ahadu Radio. Uh, joining also is uh, from Vitz Radio Academy, the head of Vitz Radio Academy, Jacob in Shangase. He's going to be bringing us full details about the mapping study. And all the way from Zambia, uh, the home of Kenneth Kaunda, we have Mac Fury. Uh, Meg Fury is of the BBC Media Action in Zambia. He's a coordinating mentor uh, for capacity development. This is the 12th edition of Radio Days Africa, and it turns out to be also the second virtual offering. Radio Days Africa stimulates learning, engagement, and conversation about the radio and audio business in Africa. Radio Days Africa is presented by the Vitz Radio Academy under the auspices of the Department of Journalism. In 2021, we're hosting 70 speakers in over 21 
accept. Uh, do remember to tell other people that delegates can download the Radio Days Africa app in the Play Store or in the App Store. They should just search for Radio Days Africa and uh, you'd get it. I actually have downloaded that. All sessions also are podcasted and they're available on radiodaysafrica.co.za. So you can always go back and listen again. Radio Days Africa has uh, commission also bespoke podcast series for the entire uh, Radio Days Africa for 2021. So you'd be able to find uh, podcasting the African way. It's available from the Radio Days Africa website. Also, we'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, uh, the Conrad Adeno Stiftung Media Program for Sub-Sahara Africa, who have been a long-term partner and sponsor. Without their support and sponsorship, uh, Radio Days Africa would not be possible. So thank you to the CAS. Radio Days Africa is also supported by the National Association of Broadcasters, Media Heads 360, Wise Buddha Jingles, the US Embassy in Pretoria, RCS Sound Software, Iono.fm, Samro, and PodNews.net. Thank you very much also for finding time to join us in this session. We kick things off by going straight to uh, Jacob Shangase. Jacob is the head of Vitz Radio Academy and he brings us up to speed uh, on the, map, the mapping study that has, is being planned by Vitz Radio Academy. Jacob, uh, can we hear what, what exactly is this mapping study about? And can we hear further details? Um, thank you. Thank you um, very much, Jonathan. Um, good afternoon, um, colleagues. Um, yes, as Jonathan said, Jacob Mchangase from Vets Radio Academy. Um, I'm passionate about research on community radio development on the African continent. Um, let me start by acknowledging um, our partners um, for this mapping study, Jonathan. Um, this is a joint publication by Forjo Media Institute um, and Vets Journalism as part of the project Consortium for Human Rights and Media in Africa, CHAM, which is funded by CEDA. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a project that is designed and implemented by a consortium of six regional partners, Forjo Media Institute, uh, Vets Journalism, Civicas, uh, Civil Rights Defenders, and Defend Defenders, and Hub Africa. Um, there is also Vets Radio Academy, um, which is also in, involved in the coordination of everything in terms of, of this mapping study. Um, as the academy, we are based um, in, in uh, Johannesburg, um, University of the Vetvatesrand, um, at what is regarded as um, the media hub, the continent's media hub um, in Johannesburg. And we find innovative ways of making research available to the industry and broader public. Um, before I get into the details about the research, um, Jonathan, let me indicate that it took us 10 months of research and writing, putting together everything about, um, about this uh, study. And we appreciate the key informants from the 11 selected countries. And I'm glad that one of them is with us here, Mac Piri, um, who gave us insights about community radio in Zambia. Um, and also including community uh, radio consultants in the different uh, sub-regions of the African continent. Um, the purpose of the study, Jonathan, was to gather information and develop a better understanding of the community radio landscapes in different parts of sub-Saharan Africa in order to identify needs, opportunities, and potential partners potential partners in terms of the local countries and the different sub-regions of the African continent um, for developing a program of support for community radio on the continent. The aim was not just to present an overview of the sector, but it's also to present some suggestions for ways in which uh, it can be better supported so that a community radio station can serve the needs of their audiences um, in the range of circumstances found um, in different countries and the different sub-regions of the continent. In terms of the envisage program of support, um, our view is that it should be based on a productive model that takes into account the range of circumstances um, in sub-Saharan Africa, its sub-regions, as well as the countries. Um, this report therefore presents 
a descriptive analysis of computational landscapes in 11 countries from West, East, and Southern Africa. And these countries are South Africa, Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, Zambia, Mozambique, Kenya, Tanzania, Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, and the kingdom of uh, Eswatini. Um, the methodology used was a combination of documents review, desktop research, and virtual interviews um, of the key informants in the 11 countries. Um, those, these informants were selected on the basis of extensive experience in the media industry, community radio in particular. Um, and they include community radio activists currently or previously involved with the community radio sector in their countries, um, and or playing various roles in capacity building and training in their regions. In terms of the limitations for the study, we encountered that there is no readily available information, especially in terms of the agreed upon data about community radio in sub-Saharan Africa. And in cases where there is existing literature, we encountered that information is not current. Um, the key informants that we relied upon for current data information, some of them were not terminally responsive with the questionnaires and for the interviews. There was also a challenge around the language barrier in situations where English as the language for the research had to engage French speaking key inf in informants. We had to resort to Google Translate um, um, for the questionnaires back and forth. And the challenge that we encounter, um, we encountered the first thing was around the definition um, of community radio on the African continent. Um, we, we encountered that community radio is often trapped in the complex understanding of the notion of community. And then we had to look at AMAC International um, with membership footprints on the five continents that defines community radio, that defines community in community radio as geographical based group of persons um, or social group or sector of the public who have common or specific interest. Um, and we must say that um, although the AMAC definition can be viewed as standard, um, we encountered that there are no, there are community radio stations that do not fall neatly into this category. Um, these are stations, some of them are partly commercial or set up to set particular interest groups like churches um, and, and, and other groups. It is important to state colleagues that none of the socio-political and socio-economical blocks as well as the language blocks or, or in the member states within the Anglophone, Francophone and Russophone countries have homogeneous approach to the notion of community in the community radio sector. Um, the reason behind this um, in, 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 in many reasons is that it's because poor regulation has allowed people to exploit the term community um, in the community radio sector for commercial and some for political reasons. Um, and I think we'll all agree that community radio in Africa is commonly known for its local community development um, service. Um, but however, in, in 2017, in Durban, a gathering of 40 media professionals um, from across sub-Saharan Africa, they identified what is called proximity radio, um, which is basically community radio stations that do a particular public service. These stations were drawn from case studies from Uganda, Zambia, um, and these stations uh, are station, radio stations uh, which encompass all types of um, radio stations from local, vernacular, profit, and non-profit. And these stations are set up to serve particular areas or language groups. Um, and these can be viewed as hybrid local stations with both community and commercial postures offering local community development as well as a broader public um, service. We noted that amidst all the challenges around the definition of community in the community radio sector, uh, the, the agreement is that community radio sector plays an important role in Africa. It provides a platform for community development in disadvantaged communities. Um, we also um, noted that the sector has attracted significant international donor support over time, and um, all sub-regions of the continent have vibrant community radio stations in one way um, or another. 
Um, I would like uh, the crew to help me. I want to call up a slide number 15. Um, I want to share with the conference. Um, this is the slide, slide number 15, coll uh, colleagues, not 20. Yeah, this one, thank you very much. Um, in, in this, on this slide, you will see the countries um, you know, that we engage for the case studies and community radio stations, as you can see, Senegal, um, plus minus 220 stations, Ethiopia, plus 15, Kenya, 300, Tanzania, um, Mozambique, Eswatini, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Nigeria, and Ghana. And I want to, to mention that uh, in the kingdom of Eswatini and Zimbabwe, these are community radio initiatives because the stations um, are not yet um, on air. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, colleagues. Let me continue. I'll call upon slide later on. Um, in terms of the key issues um, that we found across the African continent, um, we, we think them in three areas, which is ownership and control, sustainability, and programming. We, under ownership and control, um, we noted that um, international development agencies, the likes of UNESCO and others, um, they actually uh, fund or they started these community radio stations and handed them over to local governments to administer them for community developments on behalf of the communities. And uh, also there are community radio stations that are owned and controlled by religious groups or academic um, institutions and, as well as NGOs. And some of them are actually owned by individuals um, or corporates in different countries but uh, the interesting thing with those are that they do have community participation. On sustainability, we noted that there's over-reliance on donor funding, especially donors from outside. And then on, on, on issues of legal, and uh, there's also issue of legal and policy restriction for commercial viability of community radio stations. In some countries, we found that governments, they put the restrictions on how community radio can actually access funding around advertising uh, and, 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 and related uh, sources of income. And also in ownership, we noted that there are individuals or in corporate owned radio stations, as I said, with community participation. Um, on, on sust um, 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 and then on, 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 on sustainability, sorry, on sustainability, I lost track of my presentation. There is also structured media development and diversity programs. And um, for instance, in countries like South Africa, uh, through the likes of media development and diversity agency. And on issues of programming, uh, we noted that the strong elements of community participation through NGOs or uh, what is called listeners clubs in other countries. And also um, some programs are focused on peace building and democracy and good, and good governance in those countries and the regions. And also there are programs or contents that are issue based tackling issues of HIV and AIDS, gender, farming, and um, agriculture, et cetera. And then on the issue of recommendations, um, um, we, we identified um, uh, one of the area that we identified on recommendations for the Envisage program of support is networking. Um, if um, networking, um, networking is in terms of reviving and strengthening advocacy and lobby groups like AMAC Africa and the different sub-regional structures, for instance, in East Africa, there was a, 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 a strong um, involvement of, of the sub-regional structure there in the East Africa. Uh, we also believe that the reviving the network structures will help structures to facilitate shared best practices as we used to see with AMAC Africa in the past. And we can also have joint advocacy and lobbying uh, uh, programs for enabling environment in countries, in many countries in the region, in, in, in the African continent, um, where there are no enabling environments. And also um, uh, there is recommendation around content sharing. Um, the, con the recommendation on content sharing is linked to networking. Um, uh, those who have been around with the community radio sector for, 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 for some time will remember that AMAC Africa used to facilitate what was called Simbani News. And it was a model of distribution of news across Africa. They will bring different journalists um, into one area. I remember there was one, in jo they, they brought them to Johannesburg and then they will work around news features and then they will distribute them across the African continent. 
um, and also content sharing um, um, uh, uh, institutions like Vets Radio Academy, they have what is called local uh, voices um, news, which is meant to amplify the voice of usually marginalized and demonstrate how active citizenry or lack thereof can actually contribute to the betterment or um, deterioration um, of the society if um, there is lack of active citizen. And then also shared contents like, for instance, Vets, has, uh, Vets Radio Academy has Bua Kuluma Network, citizen justice programs. Um, those are the areas or those are the models that can be shared for content sharing in, 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 on the African continent. On sustainability, we recommend that there is a need for research into a community radio business model specifically community radio business model, um, you know, that can foster enabling environments in different countries, um, also that can harness viable funding modalities and tap into the local um, economies um, to sustain the community radio sector. Um, um, if I continue with recommendations, there is also a recommendation around community radio research. Um, we we, we uh, recommend that there is a need for more in-depth research on the stage of community radio on the African continent. And um, the experience with this mapping study, you know, helped us to say that there is a need to have coordinated team of researchers in the, in the different sub-regions of the African continent, and then they will contribute to the, you know, community radio research on the continent. Also, there is a need for audience research specifically for community radio audiences. A scientific model, we are advocating for a scientific model that will specifically inform community radio audience measurements, especially in remote um, uh, communities. Um, also very important is the issue uh, of research for policy and regulatory regimes to inform campaign for proper frameworks in countries where there are no proper policy and regulatory regimes. Many countries, for instance, some of them are, are quite struggling, like in the kingdom of Eswatini, you know, and, and, and others. And also um, on policy and regulatory regimes, we also feel that uh, this should look into media diversity and development support um, uh, programs. Um, and also look at um, uh, going to back to the basics of the principles of community radio, where the continent can come up with shared vision from community radio ownership and control, community involvement and participation, and also come up with operational manuals to help community radio practitioners in running and sustaining community radio stations. Um, in terms of the recommendation for the sub-regions, um, we feel that there is a need for coordinated capacity building and training for structured programs through central locations. For instance, we noted that in the countries, you find that there are uh, countries or institutions that are resourced, better resourced and easily accessible for the different role players to actually access capacity building training that will serve the needs of the sub-regions and the African continent from those countries. And this, this coordinated capacity building and training program should look into issues of community radio governance and management, look at the various, mo various models, including corporate governance, um, review of the training interventions. We noted that there has been quite a number of training interventions in different countries, but there is still capacity challenges. So there's also a need for training of trainers, which will include coaching and mentoring, where we'll develop a kind of trainers in the different countries and the different regions to sustain the sector through coaching and mentoring. And also um, uh, uh, capacity building and training programs that will facilitate social justice issues in community radio programming um, to tackle issues of gender-based violence, HIV and AIDS and other socioeconomic rights. I would also like to call up slide 20, um, colleagues, slide 20 uh, to share uh, sub-regional recommendations um, you will see the different sub-regional recommendations, the areas that we recommend for East Africa, West Africa, and Southern Africa. Um, radio ma management, you'll see the different ticks there to indicate that these areas are actually recommended for the different sub-regions. And where there are no ticks, these are recommendations that are not applicable um, you know, to the different um, uh, uh, sub-regions. Um, um, if I may also call slide 21, um, for country specific recommendations. I'm not going to go into the details, but you will see in different countries um, uh, where we feel that there is a need for radio management, uh, capacity building and training programs, 
business development and sustainability for community radio, local news, quality programming, uh, social media for radio, uh, training of trainers, social justice issues on community radio programming, also the review of training interventions. We are indicating in the different countries where these different um, areas are applicable or are needed in those different um, uh, uh, countries. Uh, when you access the report, you will read more in details around that. In conclusion, um, colleagues and Jonathan, we believe that uh, this mapping study will facilitate a framework for sustained community radio development um, a, a support program, support programs for community radio on the continent. Um, it will also help us in identifying local partners in the different countries and the different sub-regions um, to help us um, uh, uh, develop community radio in those countries and the sub-regions and the continent at large. We will also rope in individuals with expertise um, to work with local partners. That's what we, we, we believe this mapping study will help. And, and lastly, um, we, we, you know, having a look at um, what um, uh, uh, Radio Days Africa Conference has done for years, we believe that we will canvass um, the conference uh, to have Africa Community Radio Development Program as integral part of the continent going uh, forward. Thank you, colleague Asante. Merci, obrigado. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... That's quite very incisive and uh, very, very detailed. Um, quite a lot of work that you, you've put in there, uh, Jacob. It's quite a lot of work. I, I was curious about a few things, um, but thankfully towards the end of your presentation, you eventually mentioned uh, that as part of your recommendation. But during the studies, how much of interlink would you say uh, is being discovered to exist between community radios and uh, the use of digital platforms? Um, it, it, is, it is highlighted um, in the report. There are, there are countries and sub-regions where there's quite very strong uh, interlink between community radio and the different digital platforms. Um, there are countries where also the issue um, of connectivity and accessibility is still a challenge, which makes it difficult for community radio stations to actually explore the different digital platforms, you know, to supplement community radio programming. Um, but yeah, it's the areas that can actually be explored and some countries can actually learn from other countries um, in, in, in doing that. I, I'll just make, I'll go to Mac McPeary uh, in Zambia. Mac, having listened to Jacob's presentation, uh, do you feel a sense of enthusiasm about the future of community radio or do you feel overwhelmed by all of the milestones it needs to cross? Well, uh, I think being overwhelmed is, uh, is, is quite uh, something that I would say is, uh, is, is correct to say. And uh, glad to see that study and uh, the recommendations being given to the rest of Africa. And I did see recommendations for Zambia, Tanzania and the other countries. I think it's not really easy to uh, really get these stations up to where they should be due to, I think, the uh, quite a few issues that uh, Jacob did highlight. An example, the issues around the uh, ownership and control. I think this is uh, something that is causing quite a lot of problems for lots of community stations and how they were set up. Some will uh, come up as um, uh, a community station, a cooperative, but after some time, you do find that they move out of that mandate and start really moving to other things and this is differences in opinion where uh, people are fighting for control of this particular station. I think we've been facing this and it's not a new thing in Zambia only but I feel it's also something that is happening in the rest of Africa. As BBC Media Action what we've done and also tried to borrow from the Vitz Radio Academy's uh, book the Community Radio Handbook we, we did try to get ourselves trying to understand what's a perfect station well, there will never be something that we call a perfect station, but there must be something that should be an example. Looking at the pillars, the mission and governance, you know, does the board support them? Do they have, a, what's the mandate of the board, for an example? So I, I, I do know that uh, I haven't yet read the whole full uh, a book, but I do believe that these are issues that have been addressed as well in uh, Jacob's research. And issues around the programming, for an example, we've tried to build capacity around this. With that, what we've done, is uh, carry out research 
uh, and uh, helped these stations understand who they are talking to, who they are broadcasting to, when they listen, what they like to listen to, and what they don't like to listen to. Above that, we also decided that when this research is done, we then share it with the stations to then produce a tool for them to use to sell uh, as they're selling their products. That is the airtime to would-be uh, you know, advertisers, where they'll look at it and they'll uh, say, okay, you know what, we are listened to by this uh, amount of people. People love to listen to us this, uh, during this time. And the reason they listen to us is this uh, kind of programming and they can present something to, uh, to, 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 to an advertiser. And we're finding that that is working for certain stations. The commercial stations, because we do partner with commercial stations as well, are enjoying that a lot. The community stations might really struggle with it because then they're feeling, how do I interpret this data? Our, our team of researchers, our m and &E team, which Jacob did highlight also that maybe if we had some sort of a team in Africa together where we can uh, put our resources together in terms of the research, yeah. that would help and speak to all these needs that have been addressed for us to know that do these stations really need this training we're giving them? Do they need this intervention or capacity strengthening that we're giving them? Or they need something else? I'll tell you everybody else when you approach them, number one thing they'll tell you is capital equipment. Our transmitter is down. Um, our uh, mixing decks is down. We don't have transport for us to go and get local voices out there or recorders or any of these things. These are common things that people so there, are talking there is about. So there's a commonality of all of those problems. Exactly. So we need to find these solutions ourselves. And what a better way to do this with a study that is out there and us discussing this uh, at uh, VITS Radio Days, the Radio Days Africa. So we do have a, a quite a way to find something around it. Um, and interesting is that you see uh, the community stations during the period of COVID in Zambia have really survived. Some have survived because uh, they've taken advantage of the uh, implementers of certain programs which are non-governmental organizations who can't go and implement their activities but need a platform up for them to be able to talk to their beneficiaries. And what a better way for them to do it using radio. So some of them, when you ask them and they're showing you their numbers, they're telling you, well, look, listen, COVID, yes, the first uh, two, three weeks or a month, we felt it. But afterwards, we've been okay because everybody else wants to talk to people. Uh, so uh, community radio really has uh, uh, a very uh, uh, huge task uh, up ahead of them. Uh, if they're thinking, well, we're losing it or digital media is taking over, I don't think so. There's still okay. the need for community radio and it's remains a very powerful tool to build communities and, 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 and develop our area. Okay. Uh, I'll go to uh, Eshe too. I, I, I hope is, is uh, I'm not sure is Eshe too still on the connection. Okay, uh, okay. Hopefully he he'll join us back on. Okay, great. Uh, he is there, but he's trying to. I can see his connection is uh, trying to get back on. While Eshe too comes on, I'm going to ask him uh, a question, but. Jacob, I, I want for you to, to start to think about the answer for this question so that when I come back to you, you probably have it in detail. Uh, could the challenges also that are existing with community radio uh, operations now be, did this research take cognizance of the fact that communities themselves are evolving? So what the definition of a community as used to be versus what it is now? So you can you can process that thought, but let me go to Eshetu. Eshetu, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Sorry, interrupting with internet because you know I, the I internet can, problem here in in, in, in Addis. I I'm can sorry how, that. All right, okay. How is uh, life in Addis today? Life in Addis is going well. The election well going. Uh, still, the results we didn't know yet. Uh, almost two weeks. But it's peaceful. Uh, the people are patiency, and I, I'm glad. Uh, you know, the people are here and civilized. Uh, nothing will. Uh, people, especially the Western, they expecting a lot uh, with this time. But uh, finally, we did great. The media, uh, great this time because without any interference, they did. Uh, every yeah. rural area and the media contribution was great in Ethiopia in the, the election time. 
the post-election and during election or two. So uh, it's very nice until now. Okay. Let, let's talk. I don't know if you were able to hear some of the points uh, that were made by Jacob uh, while he went over the, the details of the mapping study. But how was the health of community radio like in, uh, I know you're in commercial radio, but what is the health of community radio like in Ethiopia? Here, for example, the commercial radio uh, and between the commercial, there is, uh, uh, you know, the radio and TV is growing up the last three, four years. Uh, still the commercial radio is 10, the community, I think there is uh, 47 because there is 18 ethnic uh, groups so every corner, every ethnic, they need their own community radio. So uh, the community radio is allowed here, uh, but it's not uh, grown up as uh, compared to other uh, countries. There is uh, a lot of challenge because of the, uh, because of the media policy. The media policy created by, I think last year, uh, a lot of uh, the media equipment is, is very challenging here. Uh, it's very expensive, the high tax, the media discouraging as a country here in Ethiopia. So the community mm -hmm. radio is not growing up because of uh, they couldn't find easily in the country the equipment to transmit easily in the community, even that uh, simply the transmitter. And uh, it's very expensive to, to, to create that uh, community radio here in the country. Okay, um, so I come back to you, Jacob, and then we try to move away from uh, the, this This will be the last question as regards to this mapping study, and then we check out what really is uh, happening in other news as regards radio on the continent. But you got my question earlier, Jacob. I, I, I did, sorry, Jonathan, yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I did around uh, communities themselves evolving. Um, look, we, 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 we can't run away from the fact that communities in different countries and in different sub-regions of the African continent, um, you know, they are evolving. Um, you know, that is why um, in our view, we, 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 we noted that um, when it comes to the way community radio was, 10, 20 years back, and the way it is at the moment and the challenges that are existing now, you, we need to take into account, we need also to take into account the fact that the socioeconomic conditions of the different communities are not the same as Baby Community Radio was, um, you know, 10 years back and, 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 and now. And in other countries, it keeps improving, or in other, in other countries, it's actually deteriorating. So community radio must take into account those areas as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, before I come to you, Mac, let me go back to Eshetu. Eshetu, um, in, in Ethiopia, what is it like? Uh, what's the health of the radio landscape right now? I mean, we've had different news uh, come out of Ethiopia as regards journalists. Uh, sometimes you tend to hear a lot more of what seems to be the dark side. Uh, but how is the how is what does it take running owning a radio station in Ethiopia? What are the challenges you deal with, and are the opportunities uh, very bright? Because there aren't really any many private radio stations in Ethiopia, are there? Yep. Uh, as as in general, the landscaping of uh, the media landscaping is poor uh, in in Ethiopia. Still not growing up. The last, especially the last. Uh, before three and four years before was uh, is not allowed to get even the license. Uh, I was waiting and waiting more than uh, 15, 16 years to get the license. Wow. Uh, even wow. we built a studio and all the equipment and everything the 10 years before, but we allowed to get the license the last four years. After that, the landscape, even the, there is the Reformation, the country reforming uh, the political uh, situation in the last three years. But after that, there is a lot of license getting and uh, owning the radio and the TV stations. I think uh, more than 60, 70% it's a new uh, media here in uh, 
the country, even the radio, for example, on our radio station is to get the licenses last four years. The TV is two years. It's uh, young for a media industry, but uh, each uh, uh, industry is not like uh, other African countries. For example, there is FM station here in, in the local. It's not allowed to, to, to broadcast in music only or sport only or other entertainment. You need to have all the news and you need to have created some pro social program and, 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 and so on. For example, we are, we, uh, as an uh, Ahadu uh, radio and television, we, uh, our uh, platform is a new news and current affair. So for us, it doesn't matter. We have 18 hours news uh, platform and nine hours in uh, TV uh, news and current affair platform. But other, for, uh, they, uh, they, they create uh, their own business for entertainment is is it's not allowed usually to only to use entertainment sport or uh, music or other uh, uh, platform. So uh, in Ethiopia, you need to have all the news uh, journalists. You need to have a current affair and social issue. You need to uh, uh, broadcast all this. Without that, you couldn't get the license. First of all, okay. That, um, but are you making any? Are you making? Is it profitable yet? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. As I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, before three years, for example, people are afraid of the political situation because we enter into the business. Uh, we know the business model. We know. We need to work as the media. We need to respect the media ethics and so on. We need to. Uh, do as a puppet, just uh, a pro propaganda for the government or propaganda for the political parties. We don't need. It. So uh, when we enter with the, with that business model, it's uh, for us was challenging time in that time before uh, three years because okay. uh, even uh, all the sponsors sponsors companies they don't want to sponsoring you because oh uh, they feel. Afflating with something, <laughs> so they don't want to give it to you. Even even the government is not ordering that. They don't want. People, they don't want to be but, guilty by association. Yes, I, they don't want. <laughs> so people, they said, uh, uh, we we don't want to give it to you this because we don't we don't want to uh, mention our name with you know way or afflate with another thing. So that was the challenge in that time. But after that, three years, there is you know the ethnic groups and uh, the ethnic problem is here and there. There was a demonstration and then so people they will give it to you the name they assume you are the one with somebody you are the one you came from this and that so still as a country we need to stable stabilize our journalists we need to give them the training and then so we need to focus as a country we need to you know the national agenda is a national agenda we need to okay. uh, motivate uh, we need to uh, give them uh, uh, the clue for communities and, and so on. Uh, when, in that case, you see, you have uh, people, they will trust you. Yeah. For example, radio nowadays and growing and growing, the audience is very much trusted in our, in our uh, station, for example. Okay. Uh, people, they trust uh, Interestingly, uh, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. I, 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 I thought you were, you, were, you were done there. I was going to just say, interestingly, I think uh, some, some of the details you mentioned there are not any different from uh, part of what maybe we witness in the landscape, even here in Nigeria. Uh, the talk, especially the talk, uh, news and talk radio stations are not your typical first go-to place for commercial engagement because of the same reasons you have mentioned. Uh, I wonder what the case would be like in, in Zambia, even though, I mean, Zambia does have a fledgling uh, radio market, uh, even though I know most of it seems to be concentrated in Lusaka. Uh, so I'm going to let you tell me, is that the, what's the situation like? But also, uh, Mac, I want to also uh, dovetail into how is podcasting doing? Is radio embracing podcasting in Zambia? Thank you, or Jonathan. Is podcasting embracing radio. <laughs> <laughs> either, either of the two, uh, yeah. they'll complement each other uh, in some yeah. way. And glad that you've asked uh, the issue around podcasting because uh, as BBC Media Action, 
this is what we've done. We've developed a, a, a manual, a training manual, a module that we are now going to be giving stations to uh, package podcast because we do realize that um, for a very long time, if somebody missed a program, there's no any other way they could listen back to it because nobody wants to play repeats of a program that uh, was there before. Others would do a repeat, they'll sell a program and they'll repeat. So podcasting is, is not really massively big, but I'll tell you that it's growing uh, in the country. For an example, uh, a station here, a commercial station, one commercial station will rebroadcast the, uh, the, um, their flagship talk program and uh, this is then monetized because mm. uh, the people that are helping them to stream this service do run ads in the, uh, the program. And the station is given a little bit of money for them to be able to continue doing this. So we're using this as an example uh, to share with others that um, you are able to uh, do quite a lot in terms of packaging programs, shorter programs, and then putting them as podcasts. It's not growing because of the internet penetration uh, that is there. But um, studies uh, around do show that if somebody gets paid, one of the things they think of before buying food is internet bundles. So that should tell you that uh, uh, people are hungry and thirsty for, uh, for information. So audio information like podcast could be a way uh, that we um, inform our listeners out there who might not be uh, listening to us at the time, but they're on the go. So uh, podcasting is a way to go. Uh, and it will complement radio. I don't think it will take over radio, but uh, from the uh, earlier masterclass that we heard, it's interesting to package something that people can listen back to. I'm a big fan of podcasts because I listen to them every morning when I wake up. I still, I still struggle to, 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 to figure out which side of it it is. Uh, I mean, I, I, I still, I'm still on the, on the climbing side of that, but it's quite a world. I've realized it's such a huge world out there. The exactly. world of podcasting is sometimes intimidating with too much of content that you are spoiled for choice. Uh, so th that's the part of the climb that I am. Uh, yeah. If you've just joined us, this is uh, session number eight of the Radio Days Africa uh, 2021. Uh, this year's edition of Radio Days is the 12th uh, edition of it. And this particular session is called Update Africa, where, where we are able to just get to rub minds to know what's happening in radio on the continent. And with me on this panel, we have uh, Eshetu Belewale, who is the CEO of Ahadu Radio in Ethiopia, and uh, Jacob Changase, who is uh, the head of Bits Radio Academy, part of our host for uh, Radio Days uh, Africa. And Mac Piri, who is with BBC Media Action Zambia is the coordinating mentor for capacity development. So thank you for joining us uh, as we begin to take the corner and uh, head towards the end of this session. I would like to go uh, back to you, Jacob. Uh, you are a rare case of town meeting gown whereby you are sitting in the academia, but at the same time, you are also full on in practice. What is the general radio landscape in South Africa? I mean, it is arguably one of the more vibrant and more sophisticated uh, radio spaces, but the year 2020, the year 2021 has left everybody questioning the things they've always thought they've always known. What has it been like in South Africa in the last one year? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you, you are correct, Jonathan. Um, radio in South Africa is quite vibrant. Um, it's quite vibrant um, in, 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 in that I'm sure um, colleagues in the mainstream um, radio would agree that they are always on their toes um, because of um, what community radio is doing in terms of, of, of challenging them. Um, with content and, um, and, 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 and capacity to tackle issues, um, you know, that maybe uh, mainstream radio is, would not necessarily tackle um, in those different communities. I think the good thing also um, in South Africa is that radio, um, actually almost all the regions or communities, um, even in remote areas, they have a community radio station, um, which is good. Um, but, but also one thing, I, I was um, listening to a session yesterday um, where a colleague from 702 was actually emphasizing the importance of collaboration between commercial radio and community radio. And I said to myself, that is very critical because if you look at 702 
and for instance, Alex FM in Johannesburg, they are just don't throw away from each other. And I think there are quite strong areas that the two can collaborate. But also if these areas of collaboration can also look at commercial radio station, somehow investing in the development of community radio stations, not only in terms of taking talent, um, which is good, but also at the same time, it will also be good to find ways of contributing to the development. Um, how, of how do you think specifically that, to, to just take you on that point, because I, I would admit sometimes I feel guilty myself that, uh, and I ask that same question, but you see with business, you're also looking at the direct impact on the bottom line and how you, you want to have a measured case of when will that investment yield uh, any returns? So what do you advise that should be maybe some approach to, to, to commercial stations, investing in community stations for uh, a, a hoped for uh, dividend? Well, you know, I, I think one area could be in terms of commercial stations maybe availing their seasoned broadcasters and producers to actually mentor community radio stations. Um, because we also know that there is, um, you know, staff turn over in the community radio sector because people move to greener pastures, to commercial and public sectors, which is good. But I think it will also yeah. be good um, for uh, commercial and public stations, not only to absorb uh, talent from community radio stations, but to look back and say, now this, these people are with us now, but let us also find ways of sending them back to their communities to the different community radio stations where they come from and build the new talent that will also supply the commercial radio sector. And it, it can also be in terms of resources because you find that many community radio stations, um, they don't have resources. There is a radio station um, in Kahiso, in, in Gauteng. I've been dealing with them. Um, you know, uh, they, they, one of the things that they, 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 they said to me, uh, they, they actually need a mixer. They're just struggling to get a mixer. And I know that um, it's relatively easy for commercial radio stations in and around Gauteng to actually support um, those community radio stations with a mixer so that they can actually be up. It can also be around, around issues of resources, around issues of capacity building and training, mentoring and coaching, and just to support them to make sure that they actually grow. Okay. Okay. That, that's a very, very valid point uh, that even for me, it's a point for taking. I'll go back to uh, Eshetu and uh, Mech. I, I, I noticed something, across, and feel free uh, as well, Jacob, if you do have an input into this. But in, in my travels across the continent, I noticed that there is a very low case of cross-nation uh, investment in radio, whereby you rarely go to Zambia and find uh, a radio station that is owned by uh, a company with its origin in Ethiopia or in uh, South Africa. Mostly what you would find are stations owned 100% locally. Is there any reason for this and are there not any opportunities that we can have? I mean, in, in other sectors of, uh, of the economy, you find in telcos, in telecoms, you have Safaricom that, for instance, has just moved into Ethiopia. You have MTN in Nigeria from South Africa. You have Econet in other uh, places other than in Zimbabwe. Uh, but you do not have that thriving with radio. Uh, do you gentlemen have solutions to why this is the case? I'll probably start with Eshetu and we'll quickly go to Mech and then to you, Jacob. Okay, uh, it's, it's a good point. For example, in Ethiopia, I think this year, the new policy is allowed at least at least 25% for foreigners. It's not allowed even fully. Uh, before that, I think before this year, it was not allowed in general, even Ethiopian diasporas. It's not allowed to okay. enter wow. into this, in this business. So the new policy, the new uh, reform with the media policy, is creating at least to support the media. The new government is commit, committed with this. Uh, almost the last 20, 29, 30 years was not in general, uh, the media is not allowed to even for Ethiopian uh, to enter into this, in, in this business. After, uh, after this policy, uh, there is a lot, a lot of, uh, after this reform, there is a lot of uh, 
changing, like as you said, telecom tele, telecom business entering into this business in Ethiopia, Safaricom, for example, sign for Ethiopian government. It's, it's a big a big move, but the radio and TV still not allowed more than twenty five percent. Okay. Okay. What's the case yeah. like, uh, uh, Mac, in Zambia? Well, uh, just like in Ethiopia, the law doesn't allow. Um, uh, you know, foreign ownership into the media. It has to be 100% owned uh, by the local uh, uh, people that are owning it and people that establish the station. So there's been interest in the Zambian radio market by others. And I'll tell you that uh, there, there is room for collaboration uh, to some extent. People find a way to just get themselves into this uh, sort of collaboration. It could be that people are now sharing content from across the Zambezi into Zimbabwe. A content created there is being broadcast here, or content created in Zambia could find itself on, 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 on in, in Nigeria. I mean, if we could play Amon Piano Beats in Zambian stations, and they're big, by the way, mm -hmm. and play Banner Boy here, yeah, why can't yeah. we then collaborate and, and, and see that things can happen? The African drum really can beat across Africa with collaborations and these networkings we're talking about. So even ownership I really. really love that one. Yeah, we can open up all this thing to continue doing and building the media, community or okay. commercial stations. I have a question, uh, Jacob, that I'll probably just throw at you. I, I see a question from Metro Mandla Tom, uh, who says, uh, uh, sons and daughters of the soil, care to share your thoughts on the independence of the media in the continent to keep the government honest and working in the best interest of the people. And how do we tell Africa's story with uh, purpose to conscientize uh, the mind? Is uh, reaching us from the Western Cape. The, 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 the situation is different. It differs from country to country. Um, there are countries where uh, you know the independence of the media is practical, and mm -hmm. people you know can see it and all those kind of things. They can experience it. But there are also countries on the African continent where the independence of the media is only by, you know, it's not, it's not practical. It, you know, governments, they just pay lip service to the independence of the media. So in that case, it will be difficult. Um, it will be difficult for the media practitioners to, um, you know, to actually tell the African story like the way they want, because we find that uh, sometimes you find self-censorship and all those kind of things, because people are scared. They are not um, um, they are not as free as they should to actually take the issues. One of the things that I've noted in South Africa with some community radio station um, is that there are community radio stations that operate from buildings that are owned by uh, local government structures, by municipalities and stuff like that. They don't pay rent and okay. all those kind of things. So those stations, in my engagement with them, it becomes difficult for them to actually tackle issues of corruption and the likes that actually impact on those officials. I would, I would, I'll hold you there. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. We, we are pretty much uh, in the very final uh, few minutes of the, of, the, of the session. But I would like to just see if I can go around everybody with your parting words in 15 seconds. I would start with you, Mac. Uh, what are your uh, final words on the update of Radio yeah. on the Continent? Well, Radio on the Continent, surely. Uh, I think it's a good topic, and we could spend the whole uh, year discussing radio and talking about the uniqueness of uh, how unique we are as, as radio in Africa. And uh, my thoughts are that uh, as much as you see a zebra with different stripes, uh, well, a zebra would be a zebra, but they're different. So let's, let's tap into this uh, uh, community across Africa to see how we can develop this movie. Eshetu? Oh dear. Uh, you are muted, Eshetu. Um, but I would, I would, sorry, I'll just have to hold it off there. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, but thank you very much for. Uh, I think uh, you organize this uh, and the content is, is a good because the radio, everybody is listening radio now now in Africa in general because okay. even now we 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 use that opportunity for the major to rural area even the to to broadcast and to give them uh, the question or uh, other things. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us. This has been Update Africa, uh, session number eight on this year's edition of the Radio Days Africa. Great thanks to uh, the Conrad Adeno Stiftung Media Program uh, of South Saharan Africa, who have been long-term partners for uh, Radio Days Africa, and to other sponsors, the National Association of Broadcasters, Media Heads 360, IONO FM, the US Embassy, uh, Wise Buddha, and podnews.net. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you some other time. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining this Radio Days Africa audio amplified session. For highlights, podcasts, and more, visit radiodaysafrica.co.za.